All right, here we are. <clears throat> I uh, timed the stream to start exactly at 8 o'clock, and I also was so coordinated, I scheduled my tweet for it, too. Let me see. As always, give give a little time for people to show up. Hope people don't mind the dead air and the vods. That usually happens here. I mentioned, like I mentioned last week, I really gotta get one of those. Um, really gotta get like one of those overlays that I can put up when I start the stream to like give people a chance to show up before I actually go live. But someday. Still a uh, pretty small operation over here, obviously. over a little bit since it's currently blocked by chat. Not most of the cards are visible, but I'll move it over anyway. more minutes people to show up and then we'll hop into the league and then um, I'll uh, give a I'll give an explanation behind um, why I'm trying out seasoned engineer specifically over over white bloom adventure um, we tried out white bloom last week obviously but there's some um, like there's some some reasons I specifically want to try out dungeoneer over it um, that I will get into <clears throat> Chip Diplis, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we will be getting going very shortly, just giving people a little bit of time to uh, to arrive since the stream just started a mere four minutes ago. In the meantime, I'm going to go make sure my dog isn't uh, getting into something. All right, that was less over than I expected, thankfully. Uh, we are playing Sogolos plus Dungeoneer, hopping into a league. Excuse me. 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and hop in the queue. We'll see, see when people show up. Got into a game quickly, at least. Ping pong. <laughs> well, this hand doesn't really do much of anything. Um, this hand is very greedy because it doesn't have a white source, um, but my opponent's mulling to six. Um, we have an obvious card to put back. Um, we're on the play, so at least like port on turn two isn't the worst. Um, we'll probably lead on Wasteland. Um, I think this is worth keeping. It's obviously sketchy, but at least Fields of Ruin will become a white source. Someday. Um, this probably means they're getting a basic, which makes the port better. Um, okay, Delver, sure. I can live with that. This also means the um, Field of Ruin should just be a Stone Rain, which is a good feeling. Um, I will let the Delver trigger resolve first, because um, if I just port them, um, there's a chance they would brainstorm in response, and I would rather they not do that. Now we just gotta hope they don't play their own wasteland, because that would be sad. Yeah, let's play a volcanic islands. Nice. All right. So obviously, I wish they didn't play a dragon's rage channeler, but at least we're still definitely getting a white source out of it. Um, yes, there's not really any other option here but to do this, so we'll start there. Um, I think what I will do is, um, thinking about whether, think about what am I swordsing and am I doing it now or am I waiting to play around days? Um, I'm kind of leaning towards not worrying about days um, because next turn I could potentially cast Spirit and Jite if I get a days out of their hand. And for that reason, I think I'm going to target the Dragon's Rage Channeler because it fills their graveyard and will also be a harder threat to kill with Jite if they turn it on. So yeah, we'll just go for this. And doing it now instead of in their upkeep so that they can't um, like brainstorm into it. No days is good. Probably digging for a land. Um, okay, they did target us with the bobble. Didn't actually look at that when that happens, but they know what we are drawing next. not shuffle. Um, they don't shuffle, but they're not playing a land. Interesting. Huh. That is weird. Okay, I like the second planes. Um... So if they don't have another land, I think I'm just going to play Spirit and port the island. Because um, the next turn I can cast Jite and equip around days. Um, so yeah, let's do that. If they force here, there's a chance that I'll just cast Jite. Um, 
because then next turn I can recruit and port. Yeah, okay. They are forcing pitching a daze. Okay, so very unlikely to have daze. Let's go for it. So next turn, we're likely going to be recruiting for a Solitude and um, and porting their islands. Um, this Brainstorm's good because it means they're not casting a Murktide this turn, um, which would be very scary. Okay, they have a Wastelands. Can they afford to use it? I guess they probably have to use it on my port, which will feel good because we have another one, although we're not going to use it this turn. We go for Wasteland, interesting. Igon doesn't need draw. Um, yeah, this we're going to cast and get a Solitude. Are they may be forcing, forcing this one as well. While my opponent thinks about this, I'm going to give at least a little bit of an overview of why I'm trying out Seasoned Engineer. Um, the initiative mechanic is clearly real good. Um, the um, the showcase that happens uh, last weekend, um, Initiative Stompy had a great showing. Um, XJ Cloud made the finals with a build of it that looks very good. Um, last week we actually tried a build of DNT that had a full playset of White Plume Adventures plus a couple of ancient teams to power them out. Um, let's see. Okay, they did let it resolve. Um, the main reason I'm not really moving forward with that iteration at this point is that um, I think the fact that Ancient Tomb um, Ancient Tomb really hurts your Delver matchup. You really don't want to take incidental damage, really, in that matchup. And also, um, the initiative is not really a mechanic. It, it, like, it's hard to defend the initiative against Delver. And them getting it can be pretty scary with them, like, pumping their creatures and lava axing you and things. Um, so I think, like, playing that sort of game plan where you're trying to consistently cast an early initiative creature against... It isn't that good against Delver, um, especially because um, this is sort of more speaking more generically. I think the big problem with White Plume Adventure as the initiative card in DNT specifically is that it's not actually a very good card at getting the initiative back from your opponent. It has sort of Vigilance. It's like kind of better and worse than Vigilance. Um... And it can get kind of big, but, like, if they take it back right away and you don't actually get to, like, go to the forge and put two counters on your white plume, it's just not going to attack into a lot of things. Um, and I think that's kind of a... I think that's kind of a problem um, when your deck isn't full of cards that just take the initiative right back, um, which is why the initiative snoppy deck works so well. So with that in mind, the reason I kind of like trying out Seasoned Dungeoneer with a nor more normal mana base without Ancient Tombs is that the playing the initiative later is more defensible when you have a card that can take it back so easily because Dungeoneer just gets protection from creatures, attacks through everything, takes the initiative back. Um, it just It's just a more clear path to... Um, more clear path to getting it back, basically. Yeah, exactly. White Plume, it, yeah, exactly that. It is a deck that, or it is a card that costs two colorless mana and one colored mana, and soul lands exist. Therefore, it is vaguely playable. Um, but yeah, it's really only that good because of all the other things you can do with it. Um, Bolt on Recruiter, sure. Okay, 
Uh, I think I'm happy with Caracas. Uh, I think this turn, I'm going to play Caracas, port the Volcanic Island, and then I'm going to play into Igonjo, the Delver. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, core spirit guide. That's that that would that would be a pretty cute. Um, uh, creature type to use for it. Yeah, I like that. Um, again, this ponder means it's another turn and Merktite isn't getting cast, and I'm happy for every turn that that doesn't happen, so. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so that's, that's basically why I think Season Engineer is worth trying out. Um, The I basically made the exact same cuts for these three Dungeoneers as I did for the four White Plumes. The only difference is um, I think it was easier to cut the Timeless Dragon with White Plumes because they're lower in the curve. We had the Ancient Tombs to cast them early, um, and they kind of fulfilled the same role as Timeless Dragon of being a threat that also gets you a land. I think it's harder to drop that when that card is instead on a four drop that you're not casting early. So... Um, but otherwise, it's the same cuts. Uh, one Skyclave, one Skyclave, one Flicker Wisp, one Lion Sash. Um, it was kind of funny. I felt like um, it was almost harder for me to cut the second Lion Sash than it was for me to cut the fourth Skyclave or Wisp. Um, that's how much I really, really like the uh, the. Oh, holy shit! Um, that's just how much I like the um, the second Lion Sash. All right, so this is awesome. We're gonna do this. We've they already have the island, so this is gonna be another stone rain. Uh, I'm just gonna port their island, and we'll see what happens. Uh, no, I do not think there's much of anything that would really change the difference, impact the choice of sixty versus eighty cards. Um, there was. I, I've seen, like, a couple different, like, 60-card DNT lists that are playing the initiative creatures, and the thing is, they just kind of look like worse versions of the Stompy deck to me. Um, they're doing the exact same thing. They don't have a meaningfully different end game, other than play initiative creatures have removal in the form of Solitude and sometimes Swords to Plowshares. Uh, some of those builds were playing Stoneforge, although not all of them. But the end game is basically the same. The only difference is you're getting to it slower because you only have planes, you don't have soul lands. So I don't think that changes really anything for me personally. Um, let's see, so... We could Solitude the Delver right away. Um, that plays around days. Wouldn't play around force, but that's fine because they'd be they'd go down to no cards in hands. We wouldn't be able to port them, so they'd then be able to cast a Merktide, and we wouldn't have our answer for it. Um, but maybe we just have to because if the Delver flips and they get to and they put us to five, that's like basically as bad as a Merktide resolving. And at least we have the GTA to potentially. Um, to potentially help against the Merktide also. Okay, this gets forced pitching an expressive iteration. That feels great, so we're going to play this Mom. Um, we just need them to not top deck a Bolt or a Cantrip into a Bolt. Um, we'll be able to kill the Delver. Um, okay, they top deck a non-spell. Um...
Um, do I just take this trade? I'm going to take the trade. Um, maybe I don't, actually. If I take one... If they had a bolt, they would just use it here. They wouldn't give me the option to... Yeah, I'm just going to take the damage. Oh, I actually should have ported them in my upkeep. Um, but I don't think it's going to matter a ton. Yeah, okay. They did not have a bolt, which makes sense because they would have just used it right away. Um, so we can just kill the Delver. Um, and I'm going to port both of their lands. Bummer. That's okay, though. Uh, planes lets me, yeah, cool, we can put Yarn into hand and cast it right away. They have no cards in hand, so it'll resolve, um, as long as they're not a deck with Unholy Heat, it's going to live, and they obviously have to top deck it right now. Um, so we're definitely doing this. I can just attack and kill the DRC with the GTA counters and port them twice. Or I could Skyclave the DRC and keep the counters around to fight a Merktide, which I'm kind of more into. Yeah. I am. I am more into that. Because now I just don't even think there's a there is a single card they could draw that gets them out of this. They can EI, but they can only cast one spell after it. Yeah, okay, here's a Merktide, and we're going to attack. We're literally going to force it to chump the Orion. Attack plus pour three times. Don't use counters. Um, I don't think. S I think that would probably be fine. I just think the risk is pretty low. Um, because there isn't really a s any card they could draw that matters. Um. That's at least where I lean on that. Alright, Judgment and Rest in Peace. Uh, so Dungeoneer being a 4-drop is definitely not 100% sure we want to have it, but I think Cauldra is worse, I think Lauren is worse, and then we probably then trim a Dungeoneer. That seems about right to me. Hmm. 
This has a lot of removal. A lot of removal does not have a stable mana base at all. Um, but I think B it has so much removal that it's hard to argue with. Also, being on the draw means like we might just draw into more lands and be okay. Um, but the Dungeoneer, I'd be pretty... I'm not going to be super upset to pitch that to a Solitude. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm feeling, feeling okay here. Uh, I think I'm going to lead on lead on Wasteland, though not use it. We just need our mana so bad in this matchup that it is hard to Wasteland aggressively. Especially when they have a creature in play. So, No, I will never play Manriki Gusari. Don't make me. Um... I I thought about playing that initiative torch for like like a nanosecond, but wow, that card just sucks so much. What is it? It's like four mana to take the initiative, right? And do nothing else. Like the it I know it has an equip ability, but the equip is like kinda meaningless, right? It's like it like shocks creatures that block the creature equipped with it or something like that. Oh, my opponent is Missed their land drop and his brainstorm locked. Well, that changes things. Um, so we're definitely going to waste them. And then we'll try to swords this. Cool. Wow, that's rude. Never didn't have it. What? I responded. I just I just hate Manriku, sorry. Um we're gonna lead on Thalia here for sure. Opponent is going to clean up the discarded dragon's rage channeler. Something tells me that this game will not be decided by the fact that we have seasoned dungeoneer in our deck. I know that it is wild to consider, but cool. All right, all right, that one was for free. Oh, Drachnian, right, that, uh, what does that do? It's, like, good equipment that, like, exiles a permanent when it comes into play, but it costs, like, seven mana, something like that. Um, we are playing a Yorion Mirror, and this hand looks pretty good. Pretty happy with this. Right, it's, like, it's, like, five red, black or something. Uh, a, a CMC that would be absurd even if, even ignoring the color requirements. For RB, yeah. All right, our opponent pondered and shuffled. Um, they are force pitching Cephalid Illusionist. Okay, we're playing its breakfast. Got it. Man, I play against breakfast so much. It's weird. Yeah, no, Stoneforge getting removed. I've never heard of it. Sounds like a skill issue, honestly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. I don't think I've seen Bant's breakfast. I've seen Esper breakfast, but Bant is different. Fucking train of magic trip. Man, so much magic Twitter happened today. It's ri it's ridiculous. All right, please don't force my Skyclave apparition. I assume they're getting a cauldron here. Getting a batter skull. Okay, they probably have the cauldron in hand already then. Or they're just a weirdo. I mean, we'll see. Um, Field of Ruin. I like all of... They're all basics in play right now. Cool. All right. So many basics. Such cowards. Oh, alright. Well, I guess we're dead. But we get to see what's in their deck. This is just what, like, every 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 game I ever play against Breakfast looks like. Um, alright, so it looks pretty normal. Uh, the Bant cards they have in their deck don't surprise me. Um... I assume we will hit a Dread Return at some point and have creatures in play. Yeah, there's a Dread Return. We do have a Cabal Therapy also. I'm curious if they have the, the mana to cast it. So we have Tundra, Tundra, Trop, Island, Crocus, Savannah, Trop. Only only Bant lands so far. Probably gonna therapy me for a solitude here, I assume. But if I had a solitude, I would have cast it already, so. I'm just gonna make him go through the motion so I can see everything in their deck. Still no black mana so far. That is the third Narcomoeba? Yeah, third Narcomoeba. Okay, so three Narc Amoebas, no black mana. Basically just a Bant control deck that also has Stoneforge and Cephalid Illusionist in it. Did we actually any see any Nomads in core? Yes. One, two... I assume there's a full playset. Um, I see at least three Nomads in core. Okay. I do not like boarding against this deck. It's just very annoying. Um... because they just have an, a fairer plan, so you can't board entirely like it's a combo deck, but you can't just be dead to the combo as soon as it happens. Um, them playing Uro at least makes the Graveyard Hate like actually do something, even if they're not comboing, which makes me feel a little bit better about it. Um, but I don't... I usually don't like Leyline of the Void in this matchup, um, because it tends to go long, so like the it being a dead draw will matter. Um, so I think I'm considering all of these cards and then what are the cards that don't look so good um, Batter Skulls very whatever, they don't have any big creatures to worry about stabilizing against um, Lauren, Lauren is good because they're a Stoneforge deck um, we didn't see Vile notably, um, so they're not a Vile deck, Sash is good because it's Graveyard Hate, that's just good as a card, obviously. Um, let's see. Not a lot of our cards are bad. That's what makes this matchup kind of tough to board against. The Thalias are kind of whatever, but like they can matter on the turns they go off. Um, I'll trim a couple of them, though. Especially because they, they do have Crocus in their deck also, so I have to be aware of that. Um... I think I'm happy to have Seasoned Engineer in my deck. Um, so the cards I'm definitely keeping. There's definitely no way I'm not 
boarding in these three cards. And then it's these four I kind of have to find extra room for. Um, I guess I can try cutting like one Dungeoneer. Um, I'm probably more interested in Containment Priest. Or I guess uh, Surgical. Surgical costs zero mana, which is probably better. The one main issue with Cage is that they are a Prismatic Ending deck, so they're definitely going to be flush with ways to deal with it. Um, let's just check out one more Thalia for the second Surgical. And the Surgicals can hit Uros if I need them to, although that's definitely not what they're there for. All right, let's try it out. Like I said, boarding in this matchup is really weird and awkward. I don't like it. On the bright side, we only spent 41 seconds on that on that game one somehow. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I don't I don't mind hands of removal against them. There's a lot of places that can this can go. Got a nice port. I guess one reason we might have wanted the Containment Priest over one of the Surgicals is that we can recruit for it. Um, but I guess we can recruit for a Lion Sash anyway, so that's not horrible. It's just nice that Containment Priest is an instant, so it can't get Prismatic Endinged. Only Swords. Or Forced, obviously, but... Hey, opponent, can I go to my main phase? What's up? There we go. Tropical Island, Ponder, sure. They shuffle, um, so this port makes me feel good about that. We'll see if they're digging for a land. Looks like the answer may have been no. Um, yeah, whatever. Get out of here. So many cantrips. I think I'm okay to just keep porting. Not much, obviously, nothing really to play here.
No white source yet. Um, I guess that makes sense. They only had two Misties, so they didn't want to fetch a wasteable white source, potentially. The third Brainstorm already. How? I guess their hand must be real bad. To have pondered twice and brainstormed three times and still done nothing. Hey, I can do something proactively. Wild. I think I'm going to not port here, potentially, um, just to have a removal spell up. Because they have, with four mana in play, I don't think cutting them off of anything is going to be super impactful. It's just a dramatic ending. Yeah, that's fine. The fourth Brainstorm. All right, we got through all of them already. It is only turn six. Me a stone forge, yeah, that's fine. All right, what do you get? Cauldra, typical. Um, let's see what happens to the first swords. I'm probably gonna untap and skyclave it if they force this. They don't, okay. Alright, let's put Yorion into my hand, and I'm going to tap the Tundra. Krakus is very mean. Okay, that... It's nice to have, but obviously nothing. still not really anything to do here. It's going to be uh, an Endurance. Sure. They are shuffling a bunch of cantrips and lands back into the deck. Sure. Um... Yeah, let's pass. I think I'm gonna very likely going to I Ganjo that. All right, there now. We have to keep them ported because they can hard cast Calder now. Um, so we got to be aware of that. Um. I'd really love to draw a wasteland or something. I think a Yorion in their hands. Damn, I can't cast mine. That's a bummer. Um. Uh, so I run ley lines because Magic Online leagues tend to just have a lot of stupid graveyard combo. Um, I wouldn't play them out in basically any other context than leagues that just tend to have a lot of graveyard nonsense, like Reanimator, lots of LED Echo decks, things like that. Um, a sideboard I would normally play looks something like this. This is the list that I played in the showcase last weekend. Um, basically, I usually say when you cut the forward ley lines, you start by adding two Deafening Silence, and then you kind of pick two of um, third Deafening Silence, third Surgical, and second Rest in Peace. That's what I usually do with those four ley lines. Uh, 
Um, back to this. I am... Yeah, I guess I just have to pass. It's kind of a bummer. Um, Uro is fine. They do not have another land, so that's nice to know. Cool. I can cast a spell, finally. <laughs> Um, so this recruiter is... what is this going to get? Um, I guess probably a Stoneforge. We really want to get this Cauldra into play. Um, we don't have an immediate answer to their Cauldra or anything. Um, yeah, let's get a Stoneforge. Um, one, two, three. And I'm still I'm still gonna port them since they need under the land to cast Cauldra of their own. If they do, we'll probably swords the token um, in combat. And if they want to force, sure. But our removal is thankfully opened up a bit, having access to surgical to stop the combo. Uh, Nomads and core, you say? Sure. This is going to be a, an illusionist, so we'll cast the swords on the nomads. Cool. Okay, this is kind of interesting. So... I think I'm happy to Stoneforge for a GTA, equip GTA onto a recruiter and attack to deal with the illusionist. Um, it'll leave us with port down, so we'll take a hit from Cauldra, but I think that's I think that's honestly fine with all of the ways we have right now to deal with it. Yeah, let's go for that line. Let's see if Stoneforge resolves. It does not. They pitch another illusionist. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I think in that case, I am going to Skyclave their illusionist. They mill three. Um, what are they doing here? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why they fetched there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, they fetched a green source, which could be an endurance. So I'm just gonna not attack with recruiter and die. Have that die for free. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah. So this time I'm gonna. The colors don't matter, so I'm just gonna tap Caracas because it actually has utility. Um, so we know, oh, hand is Yorian Cauldra, three unknowns. They're probably going to Uro here, if I had to guess. Oh, excuse me. Which is a major reason to tap down the Crocus so that we can potentially just solitude it on this following turn. Okay, they get a Vista, and that's fine. Wasteland here is pretty great. Um, I'm going to start by casting Solitude. Um, this Wasteland is definitely going after their Caracas so that we can tap down other things. 
Um, cool. All right, Uro's gone. I am just going to attack with Skyclave. Um, actually, do I even attack with Skyclave? They're at 28. They could. This is definitely representing um, Ice Fang. Yeah, never mind. I'm not even going to attack. I will just Wasteland. Um, get rid of the Caracas. On their turn, I will probably tap the Tundra again, because blue and white mana is what really matters here. Cool. They did not have Ice Fang, so that's good to know. What is all this mana for? Oh, their own Solitude. Interesting. Okay. I wonder if I missed that in their deck when they were milling earlier, or if I, or if they boarded that in. It's definitely possible I missed it for sure. Um, I think it's still Yorian, Galdra, bunch of unknowns. This looks like a Stoneforge, maybe? No, it's nothing. It's a nothing. Just kidding. Um, if we draw a land here, oh, it's an Illusionist. Okay. <clears throat> if we draw a land here, that would be great. A Flicker Wisp is not bad, actually. Um, I can flicker the Solitude to kill the Illusionist, um, which I will do. I guess I can actually... I guess I can... I guess I didn't need to draw a land. I can just cast this Yorion right now. Um... Yeah, I'll cast Yorion, flicker these. Recruiter Solitude will hit the Illusionist so that we don't just die. Um, and Recruiter will probably just get another Solitude, if I had to guess. I think I just want to max out on creature removal, especially if this Cauldra if it ever comes into play. It kind of forces me to just have removal for everything for a while, um, since I don't have any permanent answers to the Cauldra in my deck. Um, so let me see, is that... It is three illusionists exiled, so th presumably there's only one more, and then we can just deal with beating their fair plan. Oh, right. They had Yoran here, which means I am going to Solitude their Solitude. I kind of forgot that I was going to have to do this, um, but I think that's fine. All right, so Yoran's out of their hands. They do have a force, force pitching Uro, okay. All right, so they get to solitude something here. I assume it's gonna be soliduding our Yorion. That just, that just makes sense. Um, so that's a bummer, but. Obviously, we have plenty of ways to deal with their Yorin. We've already gotten rid of at least a uh, Caracas. I don't, I don't remember if they had multiple. They have Endurance. They might be able to recycle it anyway. Um, wastelands. Wasteland, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, So we can play Cauldra and Wasteland them. Um, 
they would have to top deck a lands to cast their own Galdra. Um, that might be a decent path to victory here. Because then we can port them to keep us so that it makes it have to draw. It's only bad if they draw a land exactly this upcoming turn for them. Um, that's probably worth it. Yeah, I think it is. Alright, yeah. I know you have a sword, so you can cast it now. Um, or maybe, I guess maybe it's a prismatic ending. And they're just trying to do it. Yeah, okay, it is a sword, so that's fine. Um, so now we'll waste the tundra. Yeah, waste the tundra. And just cross our fingers, they don't draw lands exactly this turn. That's a huge bummer. Um, yeah, let's take all of this. So we definitely have ways, things we can do to get out of this. Um, yeah, I think this is mostly what we're going to try to do is just make it so that neither of us can really make m that much progress. All right, the top deck the lands, so that feels good. Um, I guess they do have an, what's going on? Oh, oh, they're just also doing that. Yeah, that makes sense. Obviously, they are winning this race, so we need to get something, but we have a little bit of time. Emphasis on a little bit. We don't have that much time, but... Uh, that doesn't really help, unfortunately. Um, although, one thing we can do here, we can attack... We attack with Solitude, gain a bunch of life. And then we can move the Cauldra over to the Recruiter and play Caracas. And this means that we will definitely at least trade with whatever has the, Karak has the Cauldra on it. Um, it's annoying if they move it over to Yorion and we have to bounce it, but at least it's guaranteeing that we trade. Um, and I'm going to be very happy to trade with this Solitude. I'm taking four, five, six. I'll be taking eight damage here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that makes sense. Um, now let's see what happens here. Good draw, good draw. That is not a good draw. Um, well, we're definitely going to start with this, at least. Still going to be doing this. Um, so I have two more turns, right, I think?
No, I have more than that. I have at least three turns. I'm taking net three damage each turn. Illusionist, you say. Are they going to equip Illusionist to Cauldra? That would be kind of funny. They are going to do that. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, this would be funny if they milled the Narcomy, but I don't think yeah, I don't, it wouldn't have really mattered, but it would have been funny. There we go. Okay, that's something. So we can... We can attack here. They're probably going to trade, in which case we will have exiled their final Cephalid Illusionist, and the Surgical is free to do whatever we want, um, which feels good. Um, I guess let's see if they see if they do that trade because I'd be happy to do that. And then after that, um, we can recruit for another Solitude. Man, this game is so weird. Yeah, so what we can do is recruit. get another solitude um, and I guess like I guess there's no good reason not to just solitude their Yorion right now obviously they can put the cauldra onto the illusion we take nine in that case go to seven but then our solitude is winning that race on its own so yeah we'll just get rid of the orion so we don't have to deal with the flyer anymore i can't believe we we just we just killed all their illusionists the the, the breakfast is over um yep that's fine They attack me for 7, but I attack them for 8 and have lifelink, so I win this race very handily, at least right now. <laughs> yeah. Hard cast Narc Amoeba. Um, 5, 6, 7, 8, so we can... Okay, they just scoop. Yeah. I think that's smart, because I think at that point I've stabilized to the point that like they're not going to beat my top decks when they have a lot of dead draws in their deck um so uh, I think I'm fine keeping this actually uh hey uh, welcome Sultari Mage uh going pretty well um this is the second second match of the night um playing its breakfast we beat Delver very easily the first one and this is our second one. Um I think this hand's fine. Unfortunately the most important artifact in their deck is Cauldra, so Lauren is like kinda whatever, but they do have other equipment. Who knows? Maybe we'll tag a Shuko or something. <clears throat> Uh, no, it is it is three color. It's Banth instead of Esper. Um, I have not seen this build before. Um, they are the only black cards we've seen are one Cabal Therapy and the Dread Return. Um, I 
we, they milled their whole deck in game one, um, and we did not see any black mana that they could cast those cards with. So, but it's other. It's basically just Bant control um, with Recruiter of the Guard and the Breakfast cards. Not really, not the most exciting, honestly. Um, and we'll just pass. Recruiter of the Guard. Let's see what they get. I assume it's going to be a breakfast piece. Um, I think the... Okay, it's a Stoneforge. That feels, that feels a little bit better. Um, I'm not totally sure. I... Oh, hey, we do get to tag a Shuko. Nice. Um, I'm not totally sure how I feel about um, breakfast 60 versus 80. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just lower in that Shuko, um, and have swords up. <coughs> um, what was I trying to say? Yeah, I'm not sure. The, I think it's an awkward matchup regardless because, like, you need to not be dead to the combo if they have like a force of will for your removal spell um but you can't really board like they're a graveyard combo deck because sometimes they'll just cast a stone forge and get a cauldra um and i don't think that dynamic changes a whole lot between 60 versus 80 um if anything the fact that they draw um the fact that they don't draw a Stoneforge as consistently in the 80 card deck is probably better for us because that's just the most annoying part. It's it's like the only real threat they can present to us is Stoneforges. Um, okay, cool. I was, I didn't really want to be tempted to cast Seasoned Engineer when they're representing Ice Fang Coatl, so I'm glad to draw a Recruiter. Um, the other option is just a um, Eternalized Timeless Dragon, but I think I don't want to do that for the same reason. It's just they're going to have a Death Touch blocker in play, and it's not going to do a whole lot. Um, so I will cast Recruiter, and we'll just get another Solitude. I guess we could get our own Stone Forge is also a possibility. Um, maybe that's better because we can cast it right now. Um, yeah, I actually like that. Let's just cast Stone Forge. Um, then the question is what equipment to get because they're all they're all good. Um, I'm gonna get Cauldra because it forces them to. It forces them to kill the Stone Forge, which makes playing the Seasoned Dungeoneer even safer. Okay, there's an Illusionist. Is this going to be... It's going to breakfast us. Let's try Solitude pitching... Pitching Dungeoneer, actually. We really don't need that to win this game. Cool. Okay. 
Right, man, they just scoop. All right, cool. Um, I guess fair scoop from them. We were about to put Calder in. They didn't know we were going to have a Wisp to flicker our recruiter to get another something. But yeah, I think they're in a bad spot from there. I guess probably. Well, I might actually flicker Stoneforge to get a GTA. That's more likely. All right, so that is five games where Seasoned Dungeoneer has been no more than a white card pitch to Solitude, but um, hopefully we'll get some variety soon. Oh shit, it's friend of the stream faulted for him. He got us. Successfully hunted. Um, we are on the play. Um, I am going to mulligan this. This at least has a Swords to Plowshares, which can sometimes do something, so I'm going to keep this, but it's not great. Um, we at least have a Flicker, which to tag their land if we if they have if he has a slow hand and we get to um, stay alive for a bit. Definitely, definitely a bit greedy, but oh no, he's four zero. We might kill him. We might end his end his trophy league on stream. I'm showing chat one second. I gotta hide my camera. Uh, I gotta hide that too and that. There we go. Let's see what happens. All right, I'll, I'll bring this back up. Um, I have not tried the actual initiative Stompy deck yet um, because I don't, um, there's a lot of cards I just don't have for it. Um, I think I gotta hold the swords up to not, to maximize the chances of us not just uh, dying on the spot. All right, four Narcan movie triggers. We are dead. I will not belabor the point. We are dead. Um, all right, so board ends. It's all of these. Everything that is graveyard or spell combo coming in. Um, what are we getting rid of? Batter Skull is useless. Um... Solitude and Swords are good. Mom isn't really good. Um, Spirit of the Labyrinth doesn't really do anything. I think most of the other cards are worth keeping, at least by virtue of... Um, they have some text. Recruiter can get a Solitude. Flicker's tag is their land. Skyclave can kill um, like a Chrome Mox or a... Um, not a Balisage Drive. What... Balustrades by what's the other one? Um, the other one that they um, have to crack. They won't, won't always have the mana for it. Um, I kind of want to cut this Timeless Dragon too, though. Uh, Spirit of the Dra Spirit is probably better than Timeless Dragon. It's just a three one, but at least a three one has a clock. Or I guess Mother of Runes is probably better than that. Um, I'll actually also cut a Plains for another mom. I just remember they also they have Force of Vigor. Force of Vigor on Sash might be relevant, so. Um, yeah, that seems fine. I would love to play first. Do we have a ley line? We have a surgical into Thalia and Sash. I think that's kind of hard to argue with, even though I really want to have a ley line. Um, especially on the play. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. I think it's a little greedy to mold this ever. Still might die, you know. Could just get thought seized. Could get thought seized and die, but we'll see. Oh wow, we're untapping. We're not dead. 
Um, I think it's hard enough for them to combo through a Thalia that I am fine with Surgical um, not being castable here. Um, and I'll just be safe and not let Thalia die at all. I don't think they really play any creature removal, but... All right, we're going to field a ruin one of those. Put him down a mana. Oops, we'll do the do the untapped one correctly. Now they have to play through Thalia and we have a mana to cast surgical. Um next turn we can play Lion Sash. He'll be protected by Mom. Feeling pretty good here. Yeah, they might have to just have to try to go for it here. Undercity Informer. Do they have the mana to crack it? We'll see. They do not. Oh, they might just be playing as a blocker, actually. Um, that would make some sense. I think we're just passing. They can crack the Undercity Informer. We have two uh, two Sash activations or a Sash activation and a Surgical to to beat them cracking it. Um, I'm going to grow the Lion Sash by one. Nothing to worry about in their end step since they go off at sorcery speed. Um, I think we just pass, hold up a ton of Sash activations. We do have to worry about Force of Vigor here, but they have to have two of them. Um, so. They do have a second one. Um, well, they had three Force of Vigors in their hand. Wild. All right. All right, so they have two cards in hand. Um, they still have to go off through a Thalia and a Surgical. I assume they're going to crack here. So they have... Um, i got to remind myself what the right thing to Surgical is. One second. Um... I think I want a Surgical Dread Return. I'm trying to remember what the right target is, because I know, because I assume there is a, uh, there should be a, yeah, Memories Journey here that I have to play around. Um, I want to say that the answer is Dread Return, I'm pretty sure. Um, because it means that they can't... Um, it both means that they can't Oracle us this turn, and it also means that they can't sacrifice a bunch of creatures at the same time to make a bunch of zombies off of Bridge. So um, I believe we want to hit Dread Return here, wherever the heck it is. There's Dread Return. They could have a um, a Spirit Guide plus the green mana to flash back the Memories Journey, which is why we have to be wary of that as a possible line. Um, And I assume, yeah, he's going for, um, yeah, bringing back Petal, Petal, Thassa's Oracle. And that's, I think that's the usual line here, so that makes sense. 
So I exile Dread Return. Oh, he just had two spies in his hand. Okay. All right, so the Narcomipus come back. Can't flashback anything. Um, so I think what we need to do is kill both of his lands before we... Um, they just need to kill both his lands these next two turns, or we're dead. Um, that's not a good sign. I guess we have to. We can we can kill a land this turn, and we're okay. So actually, we're fine. Not fine, but we have we have lines here. I assume they'll cast a lotus petal here. They might cast a cabal therapy here, actually. Also, yep, cabal therapy. They get a zombie. How many therapies does he have? I think it's usually two. Yeah, two. So that's Yorion gone. That's fine. Yorion's not really essential for anything here. There's a Lotus Petal. Um, so I think as long as... I guess we can also... If we talk to a Skyclave or something. Okay. Um... So I think, so we're going to cast the Stone Forge here, obviously. Um, the Graveyard doesn't matter, or, and our Sash got killed, actually, anyway. So our Graveyard Super doesn't matter. Um, so we are just getting a Cauldra, and our only line is we need the next draw to be... Recruiter of the Guard, Skyclave, or Lauren. I think that's what we got. We just need to kill this Lotus Petal. And if the Lotus Petal dies, then we win. And if the Lotus Petal does not die, then we lose. So I believe we have eight top decks here. Sadly, that is not one of them. Yeah. Yeah, if we had Yorian, we could flicker out the pedal and get him that way, but alas, we do not. Lose to oops. I think that was a good hand. It kind of went kind of how we expected. It's just we. I think we drew a few too many lands towards the end there. Um, um, I think he just had it. He just, I mean, he just had exactly enough mana to play through the surgical, but. Um, Obviously, he knows that that's, that's an option, and he was playing towards it. He knows this deck really well. He deserves it, so. Uh, this hand is great. Uh, 
Um, and notably, if we had mold to a hands banking on ley line, uh, we would have lost the shit out of that game. So we just the ley line would have died, and we would have nothing in play, and would have comboed comboed us very easily. So. Uh, my opponent is mold to six, and they are thinking very hard about their six. Um, oh, sorry, I, I sort of answered and then got sidetracked. Yeah, I have not tried initiative Stompy. I think it's one of the... I'm sort of interested in trying it, because it's nice that a mono-white deck is very broken for once. Um, the deck seems ridiculously powerful. Um, and it plays. It doesn't play all the cards I like, but it does play a lot of cards I like. Um, and I have friends who've been working on it, working on the deck really well. Obviously, I mentioned I mentioned earlier, but I think it was before anybody was here. Like, actually, Cloud got the finals in the showcase with the deck, and it looks great. Um, mostly just availability. I own basically none of the cards for it. I am borrowing the ones that I have from friends, and um, but I don't own like any of the soul lands, any cavernous souls, anything like that. So I would have to borrow basically the whole deck, and I haven't really been super, uh, haven't felt inspired enough to ask somebody if I can borrow the entire deck, because um, I don't play a ton of Magic Online off stream. Uh oh, that's why they were tanking. Oh, it's <laughs> it's initiative snappy. Okay, uh, they are just playing a turn one, turn one white plume. It looks like. Oh my god. A turn one seasoned engineer. No, turn one white plume with the lotus petal up. Okay. This is really good for me that they have nothing in play. Uh yeah, I'm I definitely might take you up on that. Um because this deck seems fun. I would like to try it out. I just need to find the time where I'm able to play it, basically. Um anyway, they have zero cards in hand, so I don't know. I don't care if this becomes a 5-5. Five, five. I think they should go down to the right side. But we will see if they have the discipline to do that. Looks like they might. They're thinking about it. Because I think if their next, I think if this draw that they have right now is dead, they like kind of lose the game. Um, I guess the the next one could be could be good, and they'd be okay. But okay, they do go down the right side. I think that is the right decision for them. Uh, they put two on the bottom, and then whatever they drew is... Oh, it's an Ancient Tomb. I don't think I would have kept that in their spot, but what do I know? Uh, oh, right, yeah, dot. They bottomed both. They didn't keep it. <laughs> I'm, I'm dumb. Um, all right, so I guess we're... We're going to get a cauldra here. There we go. Um, one sec, folks. I'm just going to turn the camera off for a second.
uh, I am going to be gone for just a couple minutes. I will, I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, sorry about that. I am back. Uh, they go to my mom. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, uh, they drew a white plume. I don't like that. Lord Magicus, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to all the viewers. We are currently in our fourth match of a league with Death and Taxes featuring oops, wrong list. Wrong list again. Featuring Seasoned Engineer. Um, I don't know. We haven't gotten a Seasoned Engineer into play yet, so I have no conclusions to make yet. Um, the card seems cool, though. That's all I got so far. Okay. Um. This is a bit of a bummer. So we're gonna put the cauldron in. We only have one man after that, and no removal. Um. I think the question is whether. So they're going to be able to take it, take the initiative back if we go for it regardless because of the skeleton token. Um, I 
And I guess basically I'm just wondering if we want to keep Cauldre back as a blocker, but I think the problem with that is that the likelihood of Throne of the Dead 3 hitting a seasoned Dungeoneer means that Cauldre isn't actually going to be a blocker anyway. Um, so I think we just have to get this into play and start fighting them. Um, I will give this... I don't want the mom to die, so I'm just going to give this protection from... I don't think it really matters. I don't, they're, I don't think they're going to block it regardless of what I do. But I guess this ensures that I at least get the... They could they could double block with white plumes and then I don't get the initiative. Um, although I don't think they would do that. Um, and then does it make any sense to wasteland them, or is that not true? Throne is likely to hit removal. Yeah, I guess that's true. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even think about casting the second stone porch. I just kind of assumed Cauldron needed to get into play, but I actually kind of see that. Um, now that you say that. Um, so Wasteland Tomb is basically only good. So it'd be good against a top deck Solitude or a top deck um, Dungeoneer, um, but it would also set us back a lot. So maybe we just need to get our get our mana into play so we can like double two drop next turn. Yeah, let's go for that. Owie. All right, let's see what they hit. I see Palace Jailer, Solitude, White Plume. A lot of things that are bad for me. This is definitely making me see the merit in casting Stone Forge and just not putting Cauldron into play here. Yep, Palace Trailer. I assume it hits the. It's gonna hit the. Yeah, hit the Germ Token. Chalice on one, okay. And we drew another land, so I'm feeling kind of just dead here. Um, yeah, I think we might just be dead to having to not drawing any removal. We can't even like steal the initiative back to try to high roll what we get off of scrying into a monarch draw because of the dumb skeleton token. Um, so I'm feeling kind of dead here. Yeah. I just can't even think of like any... And we're gonna have to like chump everything next turn to not die. Yeah, this game's over. Let's go to the next one. Um, Council Judgment is good. Um, I also like Containment Priest. Um, 
I definitely want to keep Dungeoneers in order to fight over the initiative. Um, Lion Sash does basically nothing. Um, I want all... I think I want all the other equipment. GTA is kind of whatever. Um, I could definitely see cutting GTA because all the creatures are just so big. Um, what if we just got GTA and Thalia? Because Thalia doesn't do a whole lot. Um... No, I do not want Peacekeeper just because I have Dungeoneer because they have way more initiative cards than I do. So they're just going to take the initiative back and they're going to take the initiative back way more efficiently than I'm going to keep it. Um, I don't really like Cage, personally. It's only good against... Like, the, the, the only thing it affects is the last room of the... Um, of... Words. Of the Undercity. And, like... That is okay. I don't think I don't know if that's worth a card. It's like good in your opener, but really bad as a top deck, which is why I'm concerned about it. And containment priest does that, but also does a lot more. Turns your flick wisp into removal spells, makes it so that um, you can, um, if they try to um, touch the spirit realm, something you can really get them. I guess it's possible that Cage is at least better than Athalia. I would buy that. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess I can buy that. Uh, I like this hand. Uh, no, I don't want Peacekeeper because they will take the initiative back. Like they can win with the initiative through Peacekeeper very easily. Um, and just like prolonging the game in that state is not a good um I don't think that's a good value proposition for me. Okay, they got their own white plume here. I'm just going to swords it and take the initiative and hope for the best. Um, it's going to be annoying if they have a solitude, but it'll at least make them pitch a card. And they're F6th, so that feels good too. Um, and now the question is whether I want to wasteland them. I'm kind of leaning towards yes. Um, because I have so many lands in hand. Yeah, I'm going to Wasteland them. We know they have a Plains, but, like, they would need to have... The fact that they used a Lotus Petal means it's, like, kind of unlikely that they have a Chrome Mox. They probably would have used, played a Chrome Mox as a permanent mana source if they could. Um... Yeah, perfect. Um, I always lean towards going down the right side of the Undercity because the best thing you can do with the initiative is keep it, and that's what the right side is really good at doing for you. Um, I definitely don't want the Field of Ruin. The question is whether I want this Containment Priest. Um... I think I'm fine keeping this Containment Priest. I'm probably not going to actually use it for a while, but I think I'll be happy to have it. Um, yeah, this, this is a good position to be in. Um, where they need to just play lands and cast their initiative cards fairly, but... I am going to, um, but I'm keeping them from being able to do so through port and stuff like that. Feels good.
Um, yep, I'll just, I'll just pour it again. This is a reasonable turn for them to take it back because they can. Um, they might be uh, sandbagging a uh, a uh, city of traders. It's a possibility here, but we'll see. Obviously, if they take it, we have a swords, so we'll be able to take it right back again, unless they have a solitude. Gondro, Chrome Mox. Okay, probably playing a White Plume here. Tanking on what to imprint here. Um... Excuse me. I assume a white plume's getting cast one way or another. Um, I'm guessing they have like some number of like four drops or other. Yeah, I was thinking Touch of the Spirit Realm makes like a makes sense as a card they would have in their hand that they really um, don't want to get rid of but need the mana from it regardless. Um, Anointed Peacekeeper is a little annoying. Um, I'm curious what they'll name. I definitely have to see that over any initiative card, so... I wish I could make it to Eternal Weekends. Unfortunately, they announced that date way, way, way too late. Um, so I don't... And I already had plans for the weekend that it's happening. Um, yeah, I I think the availability, of, the availability of City of Traders will keep some people off this deck. Also, just people in paper tend to play the cards they have... Um, there are definitely a subset of people who will be playing the new hotness because they play Magic Online or they follow online results and they um, want to do that. But I don't think I don't think necessarily like it's going to be hugely popular or anything. We'll see. Um, them naming swords the plowshares makes sense. Um, I'm just going to make a Skellington token and ooh a wasteland. I think that it makes swords cost two more, right? So it costs three mana. Uh, yes, okay. Um, so I could Wasteland Igonjo and Porta Plains. Um, I think I'm more. I feel. Actually, I kind of like that. 
Um, it means that we won't have swords to plowshares up, um, but I guess we don't necessarily need it. Um, at least not on this upcoming turn. And I think if they had a white plume, they probably would have cast it here, which makes me feel like if they have an initiative card, it's going to be a um, it's going to be a dungeoneer, and they are probably not going to have the mana to cast it after we do this, and then we can just go to the throne and probably win win from there. Okay, they did have Dungeoneer, but that's okay, because we can take it right back. Yep, that is the correct thing to do. Um... Yeah. Okay, they have a Solitude on top of their deck that is very good to know about. Um, so they're drawing a Solitude next turn. What we can do here is... Swords the Plowshares on the Dungeoneer. Use the skeleton token to take a throne. And we get a solitude, which I think is exactly what I wanted. Um, I'm going to think about this Lauren for the chrome mox, but I feel like that's probably worse than just having this solitude in play. Um, I'm going to port their Ancient Tomb, so they'll have three mana. They won't be able to hard gas the Solitude unless they have another Soul Land, and even if they do, we have the Mom. Yeah, I think just getting creatures off the board is the best thing for me to do here. Yeah, okay. Yep, that boarding felt good. I'll keep it. Um, these games on the draw against them are always going to be a little bit, a little bit awkward. Um, a little, a little scary. Hand has mom in it. It's great. Um, hmm. I think it th I think they've had a second land over call draw. I'd keep this, but as is, I do not like this. My opponent is also mulliganing actually, which helps. This hand is way worse. They will just play a turn one white plume and then we will lose. Even a turn two white plume, we are nowhere close to beating this. This I like a lot more. Um, I think we'll just put back Fields of Ruin Caracas. Interesting. They're just passing. Um, it makes sense if they're playing a Dungeoneer. I guess I'm just not sure why they cast the... I guess there's no... I guess there's not really a reason not to cast the Lotus Petal. They could have Swords of the Plowshares, actually, and they would want to cast it on this turn, potentially. I won't overthink it too much. I think it just means they have a Dungeoneer, and they need to play a Plains from their hand to cast it. Hmm. 
That is interesting. Yes, they have the planes. Wall swords this. Um, the way they're playing makes me think they have a swords to plowshares, so I feel like the stone forge is not long for this world. Um, which is making me wonder if we just play spirit instead. Um... I guess the problem with Spirit is they might not have to even kill it, which would be kind of bad for us. I think I just have to maximize the chances that Stoneforge lives, even if it's, like, not super likely. Um, this is That's the planes they played, so I can get rid of that. Okay. I feel... I feel smart. At least vaguely smart. Um... We're definitely, definitely still pretty behind, um, but there is game to be played. I hope this isn't a peacekeeper. That would be annoying. Oh, it's a, this is a dungeoneer and they're just overpaying? Yeah, okay. Oh no, not the hiccups. Excuse my hiccups, apparently. Alright. I I just gotta get Cauldra and hope that it lives. I don't think there's really anything else to do. I get Cauldra, I hope it lives. Hope to draw a Swords to Plowshares next turn. They put an Ancient Tomb in their hands, okay. Well, that sucks. That sucks a lot. It's, it's basically useless, so I, I'll just make them trade, I guess. They might not even. You tell me I gotta pay 9 mana for this cauldron? That's messed up. This deck is messed up. Yeah, my sample size against against the initiative is like pretty low. I've only played this might be my fourth match against them. Um and I have gone one and two, I think, every time. Which makes me feel good that this matchup is probably winnable. Um But it is not easy.
Look, at least I have to untap with Stoneforge, right? I don't really have to untap with the initiative. I mean, obviously, every untap you get with the initiative is better, but, you know. Anyway, I feel like we're probably just going to die here. Solitude, White Plume, any of these, any of these basically kill us. I assume probably Solitude on the Spirit. It could be on Stoneforge. I don't think it really matters. It really just do not matter. I'm going to draw, like, our top deck. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, we are very dead. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's fourth match gone 1-2 against Initiative. Um... It is it it is a rough one. I'm not sure I'm not sure what to do yet. Like I said, I I've at least winning one game in all of those makes me feel like it is winnable. Just it doesn't feel like there's a consistent um there doesn't they haven't really identified a consistent path to victory. It feels like anything that we do to um anything that we do against them is very vulnerable to some top decks feels very volatile so far. Excuse me. It's been a long day for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Opponent is also mulliganing to six, which feels good. Um, and this has a very obvious card to put back, so I'll keep it. Goodbye, Batter Skull. Flooded Strand, okay. Flooded Strand Misty. Get the sense this is going to be a deck that Spirit is good against, and also a matchup where Spirit is probably going to get Sword Splash shares on this turn. Or maybe Prismatic Ending. Or neither. Huh. Um, well, that's peculiar. That makes me think this is probably an Ice Fang or an Endurance deck, and they think I'm going to attack into it like a noob. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cast a recruiter the guard. Um, and I am just going to get a Stoneforge Mystic. It looks like four color control. I'm 
Whoa, fire ice. Well, that's a bummer. Well, at least I already got a card out of one of those. What does that tell me? Plateau. Ugh, is this like a Cascade deck then? Could be a Cascade deck. Um. Well, I'm gonna cast Stoneforge. And I will get a Cauldra and I'll pass. Stoneforge is alive. Makes me wonder if this is going to be like a ley line binding on the Cauldra. That would also imply that this is a Cascade deck of some sort. Um, I think in that respect, I'm actually going to also cast this Thalia. I should have done it before putting the Cauldra in now that I've kind of identified that, but okay. Nope, we're good. Yeah, what is going on over there? Okay, yep, yeah, it is Violent Outburst, presumably into into Crashing Footfalls. Yep. They have Minskin Boo, they have Leyline Binding, they have Brazen Borrower, lots and lots of lots of those normal lots of those normal cards. This is A-OK. -okay. Um, Cauldra is going to stay back as a blocker. Um, that also Actually, that also explains what they were doing when they just passed mana into the Spirit of the Labyrinth. They were hoping I was going to attack into a Violent Outburst into a Crashing Footballs. Makes a lot of sense. This Wisp is very nice. Um, Okay, um, so I wish we do a land there to make that feel better, but it's okay. Um, at least, what do we want to attack with? Do we want to attack with anything? Um, I guess I could attack with Thalia, and then the Stoneforge and the Wisp could double block the Rhino. Um, I guess that's really bad against removal, though. Although I think most things I do are against removal. I guess I'd probably attack with both. Don't block. I'll just wisp the rhino token um, after going to eight. And then I can, like, end the game sooner. I think I like that. Actually, that's not bad because I can just Stoneforge for a Batter Skull. Um, let's 
Stone Fortress Battle School, I have swords to blast shares up as. Let's see what happens when I do this attack. pretty okay with a borrower block on the wisp um, they can't outburst end of turn because of the Thalia which yeah it makes me feel good to just cast stone forge <clears throat> I will get a batter skull and then I guess I can't put it in right away because if they ice it that would be annoying so I'm gonna I, gotta, I wait for combat although I guess they, I guess they can ice it in combat too so that doesn't really matter looks like they have something for it whether it's another petty theft or what Yep, another petty thefts. Um, I don't think it's worth chumping here to save two damage. No, it is not. Finally, another lands. Okay, so I think the safest thing to do here is wisp, wisp the rhino token, attack for four, put them to four. They can cast the borrower end step, which is fine because I have wisp to block and I also have swords as removal for it. Um, I might actually just swords it right away to be safe, but. We'll see. Um, the reason I'm not just going for Batter Skull on Thalia or whatever is that that's really bad against a removal spell. Um, in fact, if, if, if they just have a removal spell, um, then we are... I guess we're not dead, but we're in a really bad spot. I think it's just a little too... It's a little too risky. So I think I'm happy to flicker the Rhino token. Um, pass the turn, they'll probably cast Borrower. Um, I'll try to just block it if they try to cast swords on the wisp, I'll probably cast swords on their brazen borrower. I guess I could just cast swords on the brazen borrower right now to be safe, to be like super safe. I don't hate that, so that they can't force it. Yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. Especially because it keeps lethal in play. <laughs> That's a good sign. They are casting an Elvish Spirit Guide. Um... So I can if I attack with everything, the spirit guide has to block Thalia. Um
I guess now at least if they have a removal spell when I go to equip here, then we aren't just dead, which makes me feel better about doing this. And I think I'll just attack with Stoneforge plus Wisp, so I have at least two blockers back. They've got something. Another petty theft. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what I was... It's what I had to be wary of earlier, so I feel good about it. It's going to be a footfalls. Um, but they have no... Finally, I don't have cards in hand. So I think I'm going to be okay here. Um, yeah, I can just... Actually, wait. Is that just lethal? That is just lethal. Um, yeah, cool. I was going to say I was going to equip Batter Skull and then I'd be pretty, pretty okay from there, but... Um, now I don't have to equip Batter Skull because they're just dead. Okay, what do I want here? I like Council's Judgment. Um, I'm not sure what else I like. Um, Uh, surgical on the footfalls that they can only ever cast one seems like okay. That might be better than some of the cards that are in my deck that are more expensive. Um, I don't really, I guess Vitae is probably worth keeping in, but I'm not sure that I like it. Um, I think says, unfortunately, oh, excuse me. Not really a Dungeoneer matchup because they're casting, they are just casting fast, fast rhinos. Um, Laura, we didn't see anything that Lauren hits in their main deck, so we'll wait to see if they board in anything that matters. And otherwise, I think this looks okay. I don't love GTA. Um, Skyclave also isn't great, but. We just don't have much for this matchup because this deck doesn't exist in Legacy. That's okay. Uh. I think if this hand had a Minus one land, plus one, like almost any non-land, I think I would keep it. As is, I'm not super, I'm not sure about this one. It might be good enough. We did see Minskin Boo, so we have Crocus for that. Um, 
Stoneforge does demand a removal spell. We do have like a we do we have a good number of ways to stabilize against rhinos. This just feels like a little bit too vulnerable to a single removal spell, of which they do have quite a bit. Yeah, I think I just want a hand that's a bit faster. This hand is not really faster, but it at least has... It does have Igonjo, which is actually pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think this just is... It's a, The hand's a little bit more resilient, so... Ooh, better skull. I do wish I think that was any white card. Um, it's possible Mom just actually needed to stay in hand as Solitude Fuel when it looks like they're about to have a removal spell. I know they're just cascading right away. Okay. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Um, I guess I probably should have solituded a rhino on their on my end step instead of waiting until now, but I think I cannot afford to not do this. Um, any land in the next two turns is good because I gone doing the rhino token feels good. Oh, they don't have. Oh boy. Okay. We're in good shape. I think we're going to be okay. I think they're just hoping this one set of rhinos gets them over the finish line, and it is not going to. Um, I'm not going to block here. I don't really need to put my mom into danger for no reason. Conjure is just so good. Four was like the exact right number for them to pick for that card. All right, they might have, oh. I was going to say they might have force for the batter skull, but now we're just going to recruit her. I probably I should have kept that port untapped because if this recruiter is definitely going to get a stoneforge mystic. Um but if and I am definitely going to cast it now, but if they had countered it, I would have rather had port untapped. But it all resolves, so we're actually totally fine. Um I'm going to call her here. Okay. This leaves me a bit worried that they're about to fury us, but they do have to evoke it. They don't. There's like, unless they have, like triple spirit guide in their hand. I guess like land double spirit guide, but I think it's much more likely they are evoking here. I guess it could be like a fire on the mom and the recruiter. Also, they have a couple different ways. A couple different removal spells like that, so. Hey, Static, how's it going? Um, we are 2-2 two and two in this league, uh, up a game against Rhinos. Um, good bot, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Right, they don't know about the batter skull. That's why it's totally fine. 
Um, yep. So I'm just gonna cast this. See if they see if they kill it or they have a force for it. And if not, then we're kind of golden. Um, the other matches in the league were we played against um, Blue Red Delver first match, and it was oh, that's a bummer. Forest pitching Uro. Okay. Um, the what was I saying? The first match we played against Blue Red Delver, and it was hilariously easy. Um, the second match was against. Uh, cephalid breakfast. It was Bant Cephalid breakfast with Yorion. Um, and we got them in three games, and then we lost to... We lost to Faulted Form on um, on Oops All Spells, and then we just lost to Initiative Stompy as well. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Um, let's flicker this recruiter. I'm gonna get a flicker wisp. Um, I'd probably get a solitude, but we already have one in our hand, so. Yep, Shardless Agent. I wonder what the Shardless Agent's going to hit. Whoa, Crashing Footfalls. That's crazy. Um, thankfully, Rhino tokens are very easy to deal with. Um, I'm going to keep Yorian back as a blocker here. Um, going to port them off their green source, since they only have one of them. Next turn, there's a good chance I'm just going to bounce Yorian. I'm going to attack with Yorian, bounce, and flicker my board, and then probably be... feel very, feel very safe from there. Excuse me. Um Yeah, I'm not I'm not looking at this. I don't I don't need that in my life. Um oh yeah, I brought the surgical to make it so that only one crashing footfalls could resolve in case that mattered, but this is not a game where that mattered. As 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 we can tell. <laughs> Okay. This is Light Line Binding just trying to tap my mom. Yeah, that makes sense. 
I guess if they have a second, no, okay. I was gonna say if they have a second like, line binding, that could be a little concerning, but we're okay. Um, yeah, so we'll wisp the rhino. Um, I think the recruiter here. What is the recruiter gonna get? Um, I guess just another solitude. Um, Yeah, I think um, I was going to wait to see if they tried to go for an end of turn cascade here. Um, and if they did, then I was going to surgical the crashing footfalls. But I think now that we are where we are, um, I'm just going to surgical Uro in their draw step. They have Fury and Minsk and Boo. Holy shit, okay. Well, those are probably the two best cards they could have in their hand. Um, thankfully, they can only cast one of them. Um, and they really just don't have any other Uros in their deck, so they just have the two. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Alright, Fury and Minsk and Boo. Do your worst. I assume they're going to cast the Fury here. I guess I could cast the Minsk because we have the Caracas to deal with. Um, to deal with the Minsk, and this is the only turn that they can play through it. But the Fury makes sense, just killing all of the X ones. attack here. Um, I think here... Yeah, here I'm gonna... I can port their green source so they can't cast the Minsk, but that might... I think that maybe feels worse than just letting the Minsk resolve and having Caracas for the boo, because we can just Skyclave the the Minsk next turn. Um, no. No, I'm just going to make it so they can't cast it. Alright, they can cast it. Yeah, the the main reason this this line is weak against um, them just drawing another land is that if we hadn't ported, then we still have Caracas for the boo and can hard cast a solitude. But now we only have one or the other. Um, I guess I can see what they attack with before I make any decisions. Yeah, so I think here we can Solitude, Fury, block the Shardless Agent, and then we only take one damage. Um, and then Caracas controls Boo for the rest of the game. I guess we don't even really have to block the Shardless Agent. They have no cards in hand. The We're going to attack the Minsk and Boo anyway. Um, let me think. This is the safe line. I think we just do this because it's safer. We'd just rather have the life and not be in a bad position later. Yeah, we'll do this. We go to 9. Your spirit's nice. So now we attack Minsk. Um, 
Now I think I'm just gonna bounce boo in combat, hold up solitude. Two turn clock. Um, keep them off green again, so that they can't cast like shardless agent. <clears throat> Keep finding the green source, so lucky. Um Alright. Do they have something? The spirit, they should have like an, a lot of ways to kill the spirit, but we'll see what they have in this specific instance. The answer is nothing. Okay. Alright. All right, so that's a 3-2 with this list. Uh, we learned nothing. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, this is the right list. Um, because Seasoned Engineer never entered play and never got particularly close to entering play. Um, I just didn't draw very much, honestly. Um, I am not going to dally. I'm going to... Let me actually make sure that I still have time because that league took a little bit long. Give me one second. I'll, uh, in the meantime, I'll, uh, open this one chest that we just got. Um, for the viewers. Honor the Pure. Sick. I love this card. I don't know what this one does, though. Yeah, it seems like a Shards of Alar card. Um, uh, so Seasoned Engineer replaced, um, it's very similar to the White Plume list. Um, in this list, I got one Wisp, one Skyclave, one Lion Sash, and the Timeless Dragon. Um, in this list, it's the exact same cuts, except since I only have three Dungeoneer, I kept in the Timeless Dragon. Um. Timeless Dragon was, is more cuttable in this list because we have Ancient Tomb to cast White Plume early, and the first the first room of the Undercity basically does what um, Timeless Dragon does, which makes this kind of operate in a very similar space. Um, but Dungeoneer being a four drop means that that's just not as reliable for like getting the lands you need to cast the rest of your spells. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to end it early since that league took a little while and. Um, Got some, got some family who's uh, not feeling so great. So I am gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna head to get get some early sleep tonight for once. Um, thank you everyone for stopping by. Um, I'm very likely gonna run back this list again next week. Um, maybe I'll get some inspiration and edit it a little bit more. Um, but uh, as of now, literally zero conclusions to draw. S seasoned engineer was pitched to solitude, and that's nothing. Um, thank you, everybody, for stopping by, and I will catch you all next week.